So, Joe, <coughs> how are you doing? Daryl, I am doing. Oh, we need the mic here. Daryl, can you hear that? All right. Perfect. Daryl, I am doing fantastic. Fantastic. So businesses are on their digital journey, uh, and leveraging the SAP uh, Intelligent Enterprise Suite is key to them. So what is the role and opportunity for service providers in SAP's journey, and uh, what is required from service provider to deliver to an SAP customer? Th those are great questions. First, I want to thank Daryl, I want to thank you and HPE for the opportunity to present here. I feel like I'm in a room of already established partners and many customers as well as on stage. So it's good to be here. Uh, the opportunity is huge. It's a huge service provider opportunity. So within the SAP ecosystem, we're talking about tens of thousands of large, medium, and small companies that are going to make a critical decision based on a Y2K event that we created. By 2025, all SAP customers are expected to move from our legacy ERP systems, R3 and ECC, to S4 HANA, which we call the Intelligent Enterprise. And to do that, they have to move not only their ERP systems, but they have to move their analytics systems. We call them BI and BW. Uh, HPE has a tremendous uh, market share and mind share with this audience. And our strategy at SAP is to lean on you. It's to lean on you to help us get this done. And our strategy is cloud uh, is basically customer choice. And it's about the customer making the right choice for their deployment. Every single SAP customer, just repeat that to make sure we're on the same page, every single SAP customer is a hybrid customer. Edge, core, cloud, multi-cloud, every one. Right, so if you're in some type of business that those words hit on, there's money to be made here. This is a tremendous opportunity. So what are we looking for our partners to bring to the table? Uh, all of our customers are looking for low cost, high value, and relatively turnkey or low risk solutions. I'm going to throw a fourth dimension in there. They're looking to digitize in a differentiated way. So when we start talking about the intelligent enterprise, or if we start talking, you'll start to hear us talk about experience management through our acquisition of a company called Qualtrics as being the killer app for the intelligent enterprise. That intelligence is going to come from you and our partners. Um, I actually don't want to use the word partners. Let's think about it as teaming, right? So it's how can you differentiate the SAP customer's experience based on the services and products that you're delivering to the market? A big part of the onus is on you to capture this opportunity. Very great, great points. So um, how can service providers tap into uh, the benefits of SAP HANA for their customers along with uh, HP? Yeah, so just uh, to back up, SAP HANA is based on S4 HANA. HANA is a real-time database, and uh, HPE is one of the leading providers. They've been a joint development partner with us in terms of uh, purpose-building uh, architectures and hardware to run HANA. It's an in-memory database. First message to you as cloud providers means you're going to hit a limit at about four to six terabytes of in-memory where you cap out in the public clouds, right? the hyperscalers. That means a large majority of SAP customers are going to go private cloud for both their applications as well as their analytics environments. So what that means to you is you need to start thinking about that private cloud offering that's also a hybrid offering. Now, how do you tap into that ecosystem? We have our own partner program. We call it SAP. Partner Edge. You could integrate your solutions with us. You become an integration partner. You could build solutions with us. You become a build partner. You could become a partner managed cloud where you take basically a perpetual license and turn it into an ACV recurring business model for yourself. So we are very, very cloud and partner and teaming friendly. Great. And how would you suggest that uh, service providers uh, engage with uh, SAP? So in, in terms of engaging with us, the right channels are to go through Partner Edge program. Having said that, um, it's important to think of all of us as an ecosystem. Um, I, I try not to think of anybody as being a competitor. I think of us as possibly a room of rivals. And so there's times when we're all going to maybe meet in the channel in a friendly way, and other times not so friendly. So what I would say is the best way to succeed is to think about teaming. Uh, and that team usually has 
Um, hopefully SAP is the software provider. It has a systems integration arm that brings that implementation, that design skill, and then it has that deep, rich understanding of architectures and deployment methods, which really is going to require a cloud provider and a company like Hewlett Packard to help you know, build that whole story from the edge, the core, to the cloud. Uh, so it's really, it's really about teaming and then leveraging some of the programs that we have in place to help you accelerate your business. Great. Um, so, so one other question. So we recently, um, lev uh, we recently launched the HP uh, SAP Alliance uh, Spotlight page on Cloud 28 Plus. How do you see uh, these type of ecosystem amplification plays uh, helping benefit all the uh, parties involved uh, in, in this type of uh, act activity? So I love the program. I love the page. I think uh, it makes a lot of sense. There are a lot of customers who are established SAP customers, and when they're making their cho choice to move forward with a new platform, uh, a lot of times they're, they're looking for HPE for that kind of guidance on architecture, for that kind of guidance on design and deployment methods. Uh, and the fact that you could build an ecosystem where you've got cloud pro uh, providers, possibly systems integrators, as well as HPE, creating that one landing stop, that one place to go to better understand what a customer's options are, I think creates tremendous value. It gets back to that, that third merit, you know, that customers are looking for low risk, relatively turnkey. They could see multiple players kind of playing well together. It, it de-risks that decision making. So I would encourage that. Plus, the content could be repurposed in a bunch of different ways, which is you know phenomenal as well. Absolutely, and it's it's a good platform for you to be able to um, to tell your story to the market, as well as uh, for all our service providers here. Um, you know, it's it's a way for us to be able to amplify uh, what you're doing with SAP to the market, uh, helping to drive new uh, uh, leads, uh, revenue generating you know, opportunities, um, and just visibility in general in the market, which could lead to ups upsell in other areas as well. So thank you, thank you, Joe. I appreciate uh, your time. So Neil, building on what uh, what uh, Joe just said, uh, you're a service provider who has successfully built a uh, SAP-focused business on a worldwide level. Um, can you give us a bit of a background on your company uh, and what you're doing in this space? Okay, so uh, Cloud Fossey is just a four-year-old entity started in India. Uh, our parent company is Controllers that has been 10 years into data centers. And uh, first of all, Cloud Fossey became a partner of HEC, HANA Enterprise Cloud. And that's how we started to create the reference architecture, uh, de-risk our customers and provide the services. When we were looking to move out of India, we didn't have a data center. So Equinix helped us at few places, then we had the service providers. But we always had the problem of uh, maintaining a knock or a set of people in each country that you were going. So we happened to meet uh, Ronald in uh, Netherlands and that's how we worked with the Point Next team as well as the HP team and we created a total offering in which a virtual machine or a HANA uh, VM or a server were given to us as a service. And that service is just equivalent to something that you can get from Azure or an Amazon or a Google. So their responsibility was uh, to recover the VM and give it to us, run the storage, uh, do the provisioning of it. While we started on top of that stack with the operating system and ended up all the way till the SAP basis layer. So we created this stack, we created a RASI and then we went to the partners in Netherlands. Uh, the partners were naturally more focused on the development platform and the newest, the HANA release 32 or the hybrid of this world or Java stacks was something that they were trying to scale up in their environments. So it sort of fitted the environment. And this offering, uh, we started to provide to our customers as a single SLA. So uh, the customer is totally de-risked from the uptime of the solution. It runs like uh, a total cloud. Uh, where as per reference architecture, you get a sign off. The other thing that has been branched upon was the security. So we also uh, worked with HP to bring in the elements of security for GDPR and other compliances onto this stack. And this is how uh, we have been moving. So after Netherlands, we are trying to open the same thing in UK and US. Excellent. Excellent. Um, 
So your company is an HP PRSP partner, so partner ready for service provider partner um, in various countries. Uh, in what ways do you see that you're getting value from this program? So when we joined uh, so, uh, Cloud28 or the partner ready platforms, we got uh, ready accessibility of the HP, uh, HP people on the local side of there. We also got good connects to decent data centers in each of the territories. We also got a connect uh, to the ecosystem of SAP partners who had the customers, they were developing for them, they the whole AMS piece with them. And uh, this whole uh, PSRP program sort of glow fitted this into a market ready offering. Uh, which helped any customer to onboard much faster, be it from a change in technology, be it uh, the S4 HANA or the SOS journey that they wanted to start. And it's, it's basically uh, uh, the whole program was designed around that offering itself. Excellent, excellent. So I think that uh, for many of you who are uh, PRSPs, you know, there's an opportunity there, uh, as well as to leverage the opportunity with Cloud28 Plus uh, jointly as well as part of that. So, um, so you've built this um, successful um, SAP business. Um, what are your plans going forward? Do you have plans to move into another area uh, at all? So after the SAP stack and even with the SAP stack, as we started to have our exposure into Hybris, so we have deployed uh, uh, not only Hybris commerce servers, but also Hybris only channel marketing, which essentially is like a digital marketing for a FSS vertical. Uh, we have started to focus now more on the FSS. So we are developing a similar stack in which we can work with the ISV of the uh, FSS verticals sign off the uptime as well as the compliances that are required on the same platform leveraging both the HP stack as well as the point next stack. Excellent, excellent. So um, I encourage uh, encourage any PRSPs or service providers, sorry, that are interested uh, in speaking with Anil. Um, we've got a networking session, and uh, of course, for anybody on this panel for, uh, to have a conversation would be great. Um, so Robert, uh, move on to yourself. <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about Cloud Sigma and your turnkey offering uh, for service providers? Uh, what are the business benefits uh, for uh, for your partners uh, and their customers? Sure. Um, so what we offer is kind of unique at the moment in the market. Um, we looked at the market. Uh, we're a service provider, so we actually have our own cloud locations. That's how we started mm -hmm. back in 2008. Okay. So we have more than 10 years experience running. Uh, we started in the public cloud, and then we expanded into other segments. And what came out of that uh, was a solution that we um, partner with service providers around the world. And so what we found was that they were building their own clouds, but they were struggling to run them and compete with the hyperscalers. Um, and at the same time, we wanted to build a global network of cloud locations. So we came up with this model called Cloud as a Service. So what we do is we partner with service providers. We offer a full, full turnkey solution, completely outsourced. So there's absolutely no labor costs on their part. Um, and we manage the cloud for them. Um, we have a unified infrastructure uh, deployment, which is which means you can run private, um, private dedicated, virtual private cloud, public, all on a unified infrastructure backend, which of course is HP Gen 10 with GreenLake. So it gives you a full OPEX model. And from that, you can have full spectrum infrastructure delivery. Across, so it doesn't matter whether the customer wants public cloud, private, virtual private, hybrid, all of that runs off the same racks, basically, that we're able to deliver. So it's extremely efficient. Mm. And you combine that with the fact that you don't have any operational costs at all in terms of running the solution. Uh, we're running the operations, the support desk, everything else. So it gives you a fast time to market, low execution risk, and a high service quality. So you get all of those things packaged in as part of that partnership. So um, we build up that network. We have now over 15 locations worldwide. Uh, we have global operation centers that, that follow the sun that manage all those customer uh, deployments. And really the benefit is that it gives the partner the ability 
to concentrate on what their, their, str their strengths are, which is understanding the customer requirements, building service offerings on top of uh, you know that infrastructure layer that we're delivering to them. Um, and so we have seen really a lot of success with service providers who have been adopting this model, many of whom have previously had their own cloud offerings, but the model hasn't really worked very well for them, or it's been below their expectations in terms of driving the revenue and the profits um, that they want. Great. There's some, some very good points. I know that we've seen some great success with service providers that have moved from one platform to the Cloud Sigma one, and, and they've, they've found it a fantastic journey and uh, really finding great success with that. Um, so uh, my second question to you is, um, so service providers love to design uh, and build cloud services themselves. So how do you win uh, their technologists' heart? Right question. Sure. Um, they, they do. And as I said, that model hasn't necessarily worked out well for them always. Um, so I think we have a lot of experience in coming into service providers that have an existing legacy solution um, that they're wanting to improve the, the model of. So what we do is we look at what they have internally in partnership with them and, you know, and what we can offer. And then we help them redeploy those resources um, so they can leverage them on top of the new platform. So the idea is they get the better operational model. So they're essentially like shedding some of those tasks, which are maybe not optimal for them to be doing. And at the same time, they're then focusing on other tasks, which they're much better at doing. So, you know, our, our partners operate in many different markets that I really frankly have no idea about, to be honest. I mean, I, I cannot, I'm not the right person to sell cloud in Saudi Arabia. We have our service provi provider there and they do very well at selling our product in combination with their service offerings in Saudi Arabia. So the idea is that we work with them to focus on those strengths. So actually, it's, it's not a case that they're sacking their cloud team if they're partnering with Cloud Sigma. It's, it's the opposite. What they're doing is they're then allowing those people to do more of what they're, they're best at. And this is the, the kind of winning winning combination. And that's what we see in, in the different partners. Um, and, and as I said, 80% of our partners had existing clouds. And then they've, in some cases, decided to shutter them. Or sometimes they've said, okay, we'll add Cloud Sigma as an op another option to kind of increase um, you know the the conversion rate of cloud leads, um, but most of them have eventually kind of consolidated onto the the cloud sigma platform be because of the margin. They just get much higher uh, gross margin on our on our platform, and yeah. um, because we, we've got a great relationship with HPE, we know uh, how to uh, buy hardware efficiently. Maybe the HP are not so happy about <laughs> that, but we get higher growth, um, and that allows allows us to have a competitive platform where they can literally that they, they can compete on price, but also if you look on service quality with, with, with the hyperscalers, and that's a really important part. Excellent. Yeah, there's some really good point to you know being able to free up uh, those resources within their teams to actually focus on where they're going to be able to add value. So not really stripping away from anything, but actually taking what they don't need to do and allowing them to focus on you know what their strengths are and, and, and build their business that way. So uh, another question to you. So we know that the hyperscalers have a massive uh, global footprint. So um, how do you differentiate yourselves and address uh, global requirements? Sure. Um, yeah, so there's two parts to that. The first is most of our service providers are regional. Um, so then, so uh, what we've done is we've created our network. So if they choose to participate in that, they're part of a global network. So we have partners. Uh, for example, we have a partner in, let's say, Australia. We also have a partner in the Philippines, in Japan. So there's a lot of cross business between, for example, APAC, um, and they they will have customers in Japan that want to deploy capacity in the Philippines, and likewise Australia, Philippines, Philippines, Australia, etc. And so basically, with our platform, they have a unified ability to, to, to deploy capacity for their customers in any cloud Sigma driven location worldwide. So it's kind of like a meta network. Yeah. So that gives a regional service provider a global footprint or at least the global ability to deploy. And then we have a revenue share program that works between the partners. So that, that helps them project beyond their kind of geographic restrictions. Um, and then on the, on the other side, in terms of differentiation, I think it's, it comes down 
to things like um, service quality, support, those kind of things, which you don't get from the hyperscales. I mean, unless you're absolutely massive, you're not really going to get um, a very intensive support from a hyperscaler. It's just they, they can't do it. Um, so that's that's a big differentiator. And it's the number one reason why customers um, say they use the platform. And that support, again, is a combination. It's a combination of our teams. So we have 24-7 live chat support, email, et cetera, for the day-to-day -day requirements that customers have. And so they, our average response is 13 seconds on a live chat. That's 24-7. So they have a real confidence that if they have a problem, people that actually understand the platform will respond to them. Wow. And at the same time, they have local account managers in country that are working with them through the local partner relationship. So that, that's kind of a major, a major differentiator. And what I would say also is we have partners who have built services on top of our platform, and we're actually a sales channel for them because then they're able to, we have other partners who take up that same service built on the platform. So it's also a, an opportunity for them as well. That's a great opportunity, yeah. Awesome. Um, so what, one last question. Um, so you've been an active Cloud28 member for, for some time now. Um, so how have you been leveraging the platform and the community? Um, you know, Maybe tell us a little bit about that. Well, I saw about your Spotlight page, so I want to leverage it more <laughs> now. I'm going to call a marketing later later. But um, in, in terms of that, yeah, I mean, I think what it, it's really good for reaching uh, a targeted audience, a service provider audience, which is which is our audience. Also, uh, building credibility. So we've made an effort to put uh, regularly put content on there regarding our service. So, for example, I mentioned the Saudi Arabian partner. That's a very successful cloud location for us. Um, there's a use case there on Cloud28 that you can go and read. That's a little plug, by the way. Um, and it, it, it explains why they used us and, and their experience, etc. Um, so we use it for that. So it's a great way to reach people uh, in this way. And then once you've built up a profile and you've got content, then you can then use it for doing more sort of um, outbound marketing. Um, so you can actually then do the sort of things that uh, Javier was talking about earlier in terms of campaigns and things like this. And we had a good experience with this. And we've also onboarded some of our service providers to Cloud28 as well. So we've actually brought people onto the platform as well because it's, it's useful for them in other areas as well, not just, you know, obviously cloud, a kind of a cloud service partner, but different partnerships that they want. So we like our partners to be on there as well. Absolutely. It's an opportunity for them to, uh, to network with the rest of the ecosystem, but then also to amplify what, uh, what they're offering as far as um, services on the Cloud Sigma powered uh, platform. So yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Thank you very much. So um, I'll move to uh, Sanjeev. Hi, Sanjeev. Are you? Hi, David. <laughs> um, so we know that data growth is a never ending track, uh, um, a trend. And uh, in fact, uh, we'll hear from uh, Omar Assad from our storage BU in a session later today a little bit about that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about cohesive? City, you know, what problems you're solving, what are you doing, and, and, and you know, a little bit about uh, Coecity in general. Yeah, sure, Daryl. Uh, let me uh, first start by describing who Coecity is, and then I'll describe the problem we are solving, and then go on to describing our uh, offering and vision. Um, Coecity is an innovative uh, startup based in Silicon Valley, founded by Dr. Mohit Aron, uh, who spent uh, his entire 20 years of career building distributed file systems. Uh, he was one of the key architects of Google File System um, and also a co-founder of Nutanix. Um, he is widely uh, considered as the father of hyperconvergence, if you will. Uh, the company is, founded, uh, is funded by some top tier investors uh, like uh, HPE, uh, Google Ventures, Sequoia, SoftBank, um, and so forth. Um, the problem uh, that we are solving uh, in a nutshell is what we call mass data fragmentation. Um, it's a $60 billion problem affecting 80% of the enterprise data. Um, it refers to the vast majority of enterprise data, such as backups, archive, um, file shares, object stores, um, data for test and dev and analytics, that really sits in um, infrastructure silos. Um, and it's highly fragmented. And uh, that makes it very difficult to protect, uh, manage, and analyze the data. So Coecity provides a one uh, simple web scale platform that consolidates all the silos onto a single platform, span that platform from edge to core to cloud, um, and um, 
uniquely empowers organizations to run apps on that platform, um, making it easier than ever to do backups and to extract insights uh, from data. Uh, the easiest way to understand our um, offering is to look at what smartphone did uh, in the consumer space. Uh, before the smartphone uh, came, we used to carry multiple devices, uh, phone, um, camera, um, music player, and so on and so forth. Then the smartphone came, it consolidated all those devices onto a single platform, gave us a really nice UI to manage the platform, um, and uh, gave us the notion of marketplace from where we can download the app and run on the platform. And gave us the uh, machine learning so that we can do more uh, predictive analytics and search. Uh, so Coicity is essentially applying the same principles to the world of data. Uh, our platform is software-defined. Uh, it is uh, supported on uh, HP uh, certified ProLiant and um, Apollo servers. And it complements HP's primary storage products uh, such as uh, th uh, Nimble, 3PAR, SimpliVity, and so forth. Uh, we have a deepening relationship with HP. HP has been an investor, um, a development partner, as well as uh, an OEM partner so our combined solutions are available from HP and its channel worldwide. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. So, um, uh, another question to you. So, uh, HP and CoECD have uh, brought to market uh, quite a compelling offering um, to address this, you know, uh, you know, trend in data growth. Um, can you uh, tell us a little bit more about this and how it fits into CoECD's uh, service provider strategy? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me break your question in two parts. One is around our uh, service provider strategy and program, and the second one is about the service provider solution. Um, our uh, strategy is very simple. It's all about giving choices uh, to customers, pair them up with the best service providers uh, who can meet their business needs. Um, our business is 100% indirect, um, so our sales are going through a variety of partners, including service providers, uh, resellers, and OEM partners and their channel. We are 100% invested in our partners. Um, uh, we don't view service provider business as a uh, just a sell to business, make a quick sell and walk away. We are actually 100% invested in them. Uh, we have a global cloud practice team who work closely with service providers to provide them reference architectures and service blueprints and really help them stand up new services and operationalize new services. We invest a lot in training and enablement uh, of our partners. Um, uh, both for the operational readiness as well as the go-to-market readiness. Uh, we have a com uh, consumption-based pricing model. Um, our program has no monthly commit to join the program or to stay in the program. And once you are um, in production with your service, we provide a lot of in-market support uh, so that we provide some joint marketing and demand gen to help you grow your business. Um, and let me now talk about the solution as for service providers. So first of all, we are a platform, not a point product. So using our platform, you can deliver a variety of as a service offerings, including backup, archive, uh, file shares, object stores, uh, test and dev, analytics, uh, and even anti-ransomware solution for on the security side. Um, our platform is service provider ready. Uh, so from the ground up, uh, you know, since we consolidate all the silos, we design the platform for true multi-tenancy, for resource isolation as well as tenant isolation. Uh, we provide tenant self-service through Cohesity as well as uh, third-party tools like VMware vCloud Director or ServiceNow uh, or vRealize Suite or even your own uh, tools. Um, we are truly web scale, scale out architecture, so we can provide non-disruptive operations. You can add uh, compute and storage or uh, remove them without any disruption to your service. You can do upgrades and rollbacks without any disruption to your service. And that's very important for service providers. Um, 
Our platform is built for multi-cloud. Uh, you can run our platform in on-premises in the data center or as a uh, software cloud, edi cloud edition in the hyperscale clouds like AWS, Azure, and Google, uh, or as a virtual edition in a virtual machine at the edge. Uh, so it's very flexible. You can use uh, hyperscalers for tiering, archiving, replication, and so forth. Um, and so, yeah, that's really in a nutshell kind of what our solution is for the service providers. Do you have any other, you know, um, uh, thoughts on how this uh, this solution uh, uh, service providers can take advantage of this solution for their customers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the first and foremost, this platform will help you differentiate uh, your business and help you grow the revenue. Uh, you can free yourself and your customers uh, from complexity of infrastructure silos for 80% of the enterprise data um, by eliminating mass data fragmentation. And by the way, it's a $60 billion problem, so there's a huge revenue opportunity for you. Uh, let me just give you some examples of what our customers were able to achieve with the platform. Uh, one of the customers uh, was able to free up 80% of uh, their IT staff who used to manage the legacy backup solution um, after they switch over to CoECT. Uh, other customer in um, Canada, who you will hear more tomorrow, uh, was able to uh, do the backup, uh, reduce the backup window uh, from 12 hours to 12 minutes. Uh, so significant results that we are delivering for the customers. Uh, we have several partners who have stand up Coesity Power Services, including Expedian, QTS, Fundaments, and so forth. Um, you can help your customers innovate faster, um, you know, by harnessing the value of backup data to extract more insights. We offer marketplace, and there are applications like Splunk, uh, Sentinel One, um, uh, I manage data as well as Clan AV. Uh, provide variety of uh, 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 solutions off of our marketplace that you can leverage. And finally, build uh, integrated uh, services that is not only based on your own cloud, but also on hyperscalers because our platform span Azure core and cloud. So you can create a blend of uh, uh, asset heavy and asset light services. Um, let me just give you one example of a customer who used to use Amazon uh, AWS S3, um, and their monthly bill was $120,000 per month. After they switch over to cloud edition of Coicity in AWS, their monthly bill went down to $17,000 per month. Uh, so, I mean, significant savings that the customer is seeing. The second thing um, is, you know, you can decrease your total cost of ownership as well as your customers. Uh, with our platform, we are seeing service providers achieving, uh, uh, cutting their TCO by 50% or more uh, by just using Coicity as a backup target. And if they use Coicity uh, for integrated backup and recovery capability, they are seeing TCO reduction in the range of 70% or more. So, I mean, these are the numbers that I have never seen in my professional career before. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, the other thing you can do is, you know, uh, deliver, deliver exceptional uh, uh, customer service. Because we are one platform that can span uh, Azure core and cloud, as well as multi-cloud, uh, you achieve the consistent operations uh, and consistent infrastructure, which really help you deliver consistent services to your customers. Um, so that's in nutshell, you know, some of the key advantages that you can achieve with our platform. Thank you, Sanjeev. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, it's a great, great solution. And I think that um, from, from all our panelists here, uh, we're seeing some really amazing solutions. Uh, these are what we call our service provider ready solutions, ready to pick up, ready to deploy, move to market really quickly, start to accelerate, time to revenue, um, reduce the risk because these are proven, uh, you know, the proven platforms based on uh, 
uh, powered by HP hardware. Um, so we're seeing some, uh, I know in each of these cases, we've seen some really, really great success stories, use cases, um, and I think the opportunities there are, are, are immense for our service providers here. So I encourage, um, I encourage everybody to uh, please uh, speak with, uh, with uh, our, our panelists here during the uh, networking session, uh, exchange cards, or you know, um, take some time to have a conversation. Um, and I'd like to, uh, I'd like to thank everybody, Joe, Anil, Robert, and Sanjeev, for joining us. Um, and a big round of applause for our, uh, for our panelists. Thank you.